Hello, my name is Fred Hingst and I'm coming to you from the Beacon Center here on campus at Michigan State University. And today I'm going to show you how to use Avita Ed, or at least uh, give you a brief introduction to it. So I'll just open the program down here. And when the screen pops right on up, uh, it can be a little overwhelming at first, um, but keep in mind uh, it takes a little playing. And that's kind of what this video is all about, is learning just uh, getting used to the system. If you look at the upper left hand corner, you're going to see the three possible views that you'll use um, while conducting research in, in the program. Uh, population view, organism view, and your analysis. So the population view is going to take place primarily here uh, where the little digital organisms will grow uh, and uh, graphically will show up on over here. So those will be the big, uh, big pieces. Uh, the organism view, if you click on that, will, uh, well why don't I just drag on over a, an organism. So let's look on over here. Uh, this is the freezer. So uh, this is the spot where you save everything. So you can save all of your um, configurations, how you want your environment to be set up. You can save any uh, organism at any time. Uh, and you can also save entire populations over here. So there's a default ancestor. So we'll just drag them on over. And so this is the genome for our little Avedian. And in this view, uh, when you run things forward, you can see these little letters. Uh, these little letters are codes um, telling the Avidian to do something. And uh, as they replicate, and I'll just run one through here, what you'll see is a new uh, Avidian showing on up over here. And I'll just let it run all the way through so you're not as distracted as I am right now. In this case, what you'll see is an offspring, and the genome, uh, all the order of the letters, the sequences, are exactly the same. It's a clone. Uh, these guys reproduce asexually. Um, we can change lots about the environment that uh, will allow them to not be clones, allow them to change from generation to generation, and that's really the evolution that you'll be modeling. Um, the last viewer is the analysis viewer, um, which will allow you to compare ancestors or, uh, of populations um, so you'll be able to put your graphs up against each other. So I'm going to head back to the population because this is where you're going to spend probably most of your time. And so what you can do uh, is head on up here where it says setup. And so you head up to your setup, your start menu. And now this is the part where you can start manipulating all of your variables. So your um, size of your population, the dish size, so the population will eventually fill up the entire vir uh, virtual petri dish. You can change your mutation rates, uh, so if you want to have lots and lots and lots of mutations going on, or very few, you can um, change what food sources are available within your uh, petri dish. So you have really easy to attain resources over here on the left, and very tricky ones to attain over here. And so the as these little avidians evolve, they're going to be able to break these down um, at a higher rate. I guess we should say. Um, and then down at the very bottom, I find this one very useful. Uh, you can stop uh, so many generations on in, as opposed to like manually trying to get them to stop at a thousand or two thousand generations, which some people like. Um, but if I wanted to stop mine at a thousand, all I'd have to do is click, type in a thousand, and away we go. So I'm going to do a quick run here, um, but which I'll stop at a thousand. I'm going to make my dish a little bit smaller. Uh, for no particular reason other than smaller dishes run faster. It just takes less processing. And I'll keep my, uh, my mutation rate at 2%. So another trick um, is to drag your ancestor in here. So you just click on the organism and drag them on over and you drop them in. And by doing that, I'm going to switch back on over to the map view. It put the uh, little Vedian right in the center of the Petri dish. You could drag and drop on your own um, from this view, but when you do that, it changes the location and that might not be a variable that you want to mess with. So if you wanted to run two, you can go back and uh, run two at the same time. We'll drag him on over. Notice it's labeled Ancestor and then Ancestor 1. We go back to the map view and they're equally spaced, giving the same advantages to both. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to do a run. We're just going to play with it and see what happens with these two little ancestors. And they're identical to each other. The environment's exactly the same. So the only thing that's going to um, cause them to differentiate at all will be those mutations that occur as they, uh, as they go through and replicate themselves. Because there's no sexual um, uh, selection going on because there's no sex. These are asexual organisms. 
So we'll just click Run. And what you'll start to see is lots of colors, which is always kind of fun to play with. So what those colors represent. So I'm going to pause it real quick. Uh, notice that we are 238 generations already in, 238 updates already on him. And you already have seen that all those little guys expanded on out. And now we got the entire Petri dish is full of little Ovidians, except for this one little black spot right here. What the colors mean is it's fitness. So pretty much how quickly um, it can reproduce and how well it attains uh, resources. So yellow, uh, really high fitness. So we got some organisms over here with really high fitness. And then purple is kind of medium fitness over here until you get to black where they're not fit at all. And this is going to change on the scale. And it's being graphed down here uh, with our updates. So you, one of the cool things you can play with here is you can actually get individuals out of the population so we're not even worried about just uh, our population stats up here like how many videos do we have you know we have 900 and our average fitness is 0.23 and our metabolic rate and gestation and age are all located there as well but if you wanted to see an individual all you have to do is click on them so that little guy with the green box on him up here um, we have our metabolic rate we have our age so we can click on this guy over here that's a little bit better I'm not sure why Oh, there we go. They have our estimated fitness there of 0.26, our me metabolic rate, so we can click on over here on this guy. I don't like that one. There we go, that's better. Um, with a fitness of 0.17. If you wanted to save those guys, you could. You could drag them over into the freezer. We'll do that at the end here. So we'll run it out a little bit more and see if we get sort of any novel operations to show on up. and. Well, we have one for a second. I'll let a few of them show up first here. But you can see on a po small population size, it runs through tons and tons of generations really quickly, which is incredibly helpful. All right, so I'm going to pause it now because you'll notice that the screen changed drastically. Okay, holy cow, most of it's all blue, and then we have these tiny little ones with a much higher fitness, 0.67, than we had before. Well, what happened? So up here, you'll notice that a few of these um, functions have evolved. The ability to break down this resource, this NAN, exists in 16 of the videos. And actually, when you click on that, it'll highlight which of the 16 little buggers now have this. And those ones are now more fit. They've um, adapted this ability to break down this food source in their environment and are now more fit and will probably be able to outcompete the rest of them. So what we'll do is we'll run it a little while longer. And you can notice that that number just keeps going up, 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 and up because um, they can outcompete everybody else. So I'm going to unclick that. And you can keep watching what I would consider the Doppler radar here. The color is always moving around. But you can also, if you take a peek over here, you'll notice that another function um, has shown up. And these have shown up because of random mutations. And the only reason that you can have in this short amount of time of this video um, this that many errors in replication is, is that you've ran a ton of generations. You've almost run a thousand generations in a few minutes. So that many times, even with a 2% uh, mutation rate, you're still going to see these new things showing on up. So we'll run this off to the end. And you can see that's going to pause for me automatically at a thousand updates down here. You'll notice that we've had two functions show on up here. Um, we can figure out exactly which organisms have them both and it's right down here right in the heart of that high fitness area of around 2.2. It's been graphed here our average fitness. Now there's some other things you can change with the graph. Um, you can switch to gestation time you find that interesting, you can switch to metabolic rate, which uh, is also, and then number of organisms, but you would expect that they're just going to increase exponentially until we get to our carrying capacity, because that's how big the Petri dish is. All right, so I'll switch that back to average fitness. Uh, and then what I would like to do is I want to show you how you uh, use the freezer. So if I wanted to, say, get one of my higher fitness guys. We'll take this guy. He's got a fitness of around uh, two, which is pretty close to the top. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to move him on over into our freezer. Click and drag. 
And so before you can save this item to the freezer, you must choose a workspace. So you have to like basically create a folder of where you want the to be. We'll just type in uh, B to Ed, and I'll save it to my desktop. Um, that's fine. So now we just got to go back and click and drag, and we bring them on over, and we'll name this guy uh, type A. Because he's different um, than the ancestor. The ancestor had uh, didn't have those abilities, uh, hasn't had these mutations at all. Um, so we can save those guys if we wanted to. We could also um, save the experimental configuration. So I changed my um, changed my population size. So I could do that on over here. Um, modify my name if I wanted to. We can just go small. Population. That'd be fine. We could also save the entire population. So if you wanted to save this entire petri dish, um, you could do that as well. I think that that's a really good start uh, when playing with all of this stuff. So um, the the biggest thing that I could recommend anybody doing is a lot of clicking and playing, um, and then you can start to come up with your own uh, experiments if you'd like or we have, we'll have some uh, CAN labs that um, some of the really smart people here at Beacon have put together for you. But um, if you have any questions, make comments at the end of the video, and we'll gladly try to help you out on the backside of things. Thanks.